Well, thanks for joining us. We're looking at the trial passages. Now, last year at the RC convention, one of the largest uh, gatherings of Egyptologists in the world, I presented a paper on the trial passages. And a new paper has just come out about uh, the trial passages by David Lightbody, who's written a very good book about the Great Pyramid. And he published this one in the Journal of Ancient Egyptian Architecture this year. It's called Moving Heaven and Earth for Khufu, were the trial passages at Giza components of a rudimentary stellar observatory. And basically he answers the question in the affirmative. He goes through uh, the mechanics of the uh, uh, trial passages and the way they could have been used to accurately find the North Star. And that was the key in making the Great Pyramid one of the most accurately oriented buildings in the world, according to True North. So here's the famous picture of Flinders Petrie, uh, his sketch of a, you know, a plan view, uh, excuse me, an elevation view of the, uh, of the trial passages. And Petrie mentions that uh, almost every one of these passages is the same size as its corresponding passage in the Great Pyramid. I've done uh, other videos about this, so please refer to those. But the one place where it's off a little bit in that regard is uh, you notice the red line I put in here. This is a drawing I took from Lightbody's article, but you can see that uh, the the lower part of the descending passage is at a different angle than the upper part of the descending passage. You can see if you follow this red line along here, and if you keep going, you see how this thing is at a different angle, and that's not true in the Great Pyramid. So he suggests that that could be this lowering to help people that were observing this plumb bob here but I think there's a greater purpose. We can maybe think more about that later. So here uh, you, you're looking at a, a sort of a, uh, you know, an underneath view of the trial passages showing how they could have aligned to the, to the uh, heavens and uh, the North Star, especially Thuban or the area of the North Star, the, the, uh, the polar star, the, uh, the North Celestial Pole, that this would have been a good observatory at about the time of Khufu to observe those, okay? So here you're seeing the way that the priest would have observed this. You've got a pole, you know, at the end of the trial passage, and then you've got this plumb bob right hanging down from the uh, the one part of the structure that doesn't correspond to the Great Pyramid, that central shaft where the plumb bob hangs down, and then you make your observations from there. Now, uh, you notice here that uh, the, it talks about the range that you would have been able to see from this observation point looking here between the, the top and the bottom of the descending passage. You would have had quite a range of the sky where all the, the important stars that should have been observed, especially Thuban and the North Celestial Pole, could have been observed at the time of Khufu with this configuration. So basically, as I said, that's what the article shows. It shows that uh, now this, is, this is, would be the, uh, the part that mimics the the front entrance of the Great Pyramid on the north side of the Great Pyramid, this is the same size opening as would be there, and you can see they put this uh, this meter stick there. It's five meters high, but you would have only needed three of those meters to to have this work as as an observatory. And so again, uh, Lightbody says you know that would work. Now I sent Mark Foster. Mark Foster's written about the trial passages. He's the one that suggested Al Mamoon uh, uh, knew about about this and uh, he says that uh, I think he says this is where the scored line would be that's actually in the descending passage of the Great Pyramid I've done programs I've measured you know it's hard you have to get special permission to get in there but I've measured uh, and, and gone to the scored line so I'm asking Mark because this is what I sent him today in an email Mark is this where the scored lines were because he, he says that basically Al Mamun knew the trial passages. He knew they were a key or a symbol or a blueprint for the inside of the pyramid. And so since this is where the scored line is here in the trial passages, if you, if you go by the, the scored line that's actually in the Great Pyramid and then go down to the point of where it meets the, the, uh, you know, the, the ascending passage, that since it's longer in the Great Pyramid, you could develop a scale from that. So I'll see what, what Mark says back to me. But So basically, again, the trial passages were used to orient the Great Pyramid to true north. Now, in the, the article, there's a, the, a graph that shows the errors in orientation to true north of some of the major pyramids. So uh, the first point there that's the most off is the Zoser Pyramid, you know, in Saqqara. Then uh, the Maidum period, you can see, is uh, 20 uh, degrees off. It looks like, uh, or actually, arc meters, 20 arc meters off. The Bent Pyramid is about 10. The Red Pyramid is, you know, about 9. 
And then Khufu is the best. You know, it's it's got very little deviation from two north. Then Khafre is close to it. Um, and Kar a little bit farther off. And then actually the uh, the last point there is uh, a combination of a couple of the Fifth Dynasty pyramids. Now, it's interesting that this, this graph looks like a boat. And I've pointed out before that the way the pyramids are laid out across the Nile, when you do a side view, it's definitely laid out like a boat. So basically all the pyramids are sort of symbolize the, you know, the, the pharaoh going on his uh, solar boat to the next life. So uh, once the priests got it right, that they used this measuring and, and found out, you know, where, what the, the uh, uh, coordinates were for the North Celestial Pole and the star Thuban, that uh, he says, if this information was quickly communicated across the work site, then any work with a portable Merket, the handheld plug bombed site, they would have been able to set up a local alignment to Thuban and the North Celestial Pole that was extremely accurate. So in other words, the priests do the hard work. They use this, uh, this uh, you know, aboriginal uh, observatory to get the exact coordinates for, for the, uh, the, the North Celestial Pole. And then they practically give it to all the workmen who use their merquettes. So basically he says, you know, this, this is one of the things the trial passages was used for. Now, uh, why the tilt? So I show here that, uh, you know, you can see the tilt that's in the lower part of the descending passages, and then that not is true in the Great Pyramid. So the trial passages are a model of the Great Pyramid, but places where they, where they aren't, like the lower part of the descending passage, and again, I've done other programs about this, but why did they do that? Of course, one of the reasons given in this paper is that, you know, maybe the observer could get a little bit better view of the plumb bob that way, but... You know, there's usually other reasons, too, for things. And so Sacred Geometry Decoded, uh, that great channel, I know uh, Alan has made a few uh, comments about what he's sort of holding in his hand as what this means. And, and I think it's a pointer. I think that if you lined this up, took that angle inside the Great Pyramid, I've actually shown this before, so maybe I'll do another program about that, but it actually points to a special place, maybe perhaps the place that Khufu was supposed to be interred inside the Great Pyramid. Okay, so uh, the uh, are there evidences of use in hieroglyphics? So that's one thing the article looks at briefly. It doesn't major on this, but uh, the Meskechu, which I've got written there, is the uh, a hieroglyphic that was used for the foreleg of a bull, but also for that uh, uh, the, the device that was used in the opening of the mouse ceremony. And so the paper does show that there are evidences of hieroglyphics of them using uh, an instrument like this to uh, actually do some kind of ceremony to set the the you know their sights on the North Celestial Pole. Okay, and so the Meskechu, uh he says here, as well as having formed the form of a bull's foreleg, it also believed the constellation. Uh, was perceived as being shaped like an adze, a woodworking tool, and that may have been symbolically related to the adzes used in the funerary ritual known as the opening of the mouth ceremony, as I already said. So all of these ideas, the idea of it being uh, Ursa Major, the Big Dipper, and that's that's the first meaning, I think, of the Miskechu. The second is as a uh, an adze, a woodworking tool, or the foreleg of a, of a bull. All of these ideas are associated with rebirth into the afterlife. So I'm still sure there's more to the trial passages than just that they helped set the the course to the correct polar star, but they did do that. And so uh, there's many archaeologists uh, it date the trial passages to the period just before the building of the Great Pyramid, seemed to be by the same set of priests and builders. And so uh, they were an observatory, and I'm sure that the Great Pyramid, while it was being built before the top was put on, was used as an observatory too. Because remember, for years, it was going up for years, there would have been that section in the Grand Gallery that would have been uncovered for, for several years, and I'm sure that they used that. The same way that they used the trial passages as an observatory, I'm sure they used the Great Pyramid as an observatory. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Stay tuned.